He was put to the test. And notice now, in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 73, the Bible says, And after a while, now, before this point, two maidens, two ladies, saw Peter, and they recognized him as being one of the twelve. And they asked the question, Surely thou art one of them. And Peter denied twice already. Remember, Jesus says, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me three times. So at this point in verse 73, he already denied Christ twice. Are you with me? Amen? Amen. So now we are told in verse 73, And after a while came unto him they that stood by. Because Peter was following afar off, the Bible says. He was with and mingling with the multitude, with the throng. And they came unto him that stood by and said unto Peter, Surely, surely, thou also art one of them. For thy speech betrayed thee. You know, I'm going to put a little commercial in right now. You know, when you accept Jesus Christ, friends, you can't stay the same way. You see, the first time that he was identified is because when the maiden looked at him, she said, though, look like you have been with Jesus. You see, if we used to dress a certain way before Christ, after Christ, we have been with him, we have to change the way we dress. We have to change the way how we walk. There must be a change, friends. You can't stay the same way after you've been with Christ. If you're truly with Christ, friend, people are going to know that you are Christian. You know, back in the day, you can tell. Seventh-day Adventists. They look totally different from everybody else. They truly believe that we are a peculiar people. Therefore, we have to do, you know, we have to stand out. Not that we want to stand out, but because we accept the whole word of God. We live the life. We walk the walk, and we talk the talk, and we dress, and we do everything according to the thus say the Lord. And even, friends, our speech is going to change. We don't talk the same way. We don't use the same type of slang. Remember now, Peter used the fisherman's language back in the day, but after he met Christ, his, his language changed so much that this woman, that these people saw him, and I'm sure that he must have said something, and they said, thy speech betrayed thee. You can't stay the same way after you've been with Christ. And we see here, friends, that because his speech was different, because they identified him as being with Christ because of his speech, notice now he has to change his Christianity because he wants to let them know that, you know what, I'm really not with that man. But notice what Peter did. Then he began to what? He began to what, friends? curse, and to swear of mercy, saying, I know not the man. See, friends, many a man's religion can stand examination, but it will not stand proof. It's not what we think we are, as one man said, but what we think we are. Ah, many of us think of ourselves as being good. We believe that we are holier than thou and that we are a better Christian than everybody else. But until the rubber meets the road, until we are placed in that situation, until we are approved by God, then and then only we will truly find out what manner of man we are. Peter eventually found out. He did some self-examination. And when Jesus told him that you will deny me thrice, he said, no, Lord, not I. I will even die with you, but I will not deny thee after his examination. But when the proof came, when he was put to the test, then eventually, eventually recognized what manner of man he was. So the, the Paul is admonishing us, friends, that when we come to the house of God and when the word of God is presented, that we need to do some self-examination, but more than just self-examination, we need to what, friends? Prove. We need to be proven. We are told in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23, And then will I profess unto them. Now this is, I believe, or could be, friends, a class of people 
that uh, when the Lord is returning, they start arguing Christ. They're saying, Lord, you know, you must have made some mistake. But didn't I do all these wonderful things in thy name? Didn't I cast out demons and I fed the hungry and I clothed those who are naked? Surely I must be in that book of life. But maybe, friends, these other people did not do some self-examination. Maybe they never really tried their heart. So eventually, Christ said to a class of people, I never knew you. Depart from me, he that worketh iniquity. There are a lot of times that we are concerned for the future. Many of us don't know if we're coming or if we're going. We are not happy where we are in our Christian experience. We don't know if we're going to make it there or we're going to go down there. We don't know where. Actually, hell is not down. Excuse me. This entire world is going to be hell. Amen. But we don't know where we are. Jesus, friends, is saying if we just do some self-examination, it will probably quiet the question. Examine yourself. You know, true growth will never take place, friends, until self accepts self for who self is. Until we examine ourselves and truly know we need to stop thinking all these good things about ourselves and never accepting the fact and reality that we are sinners. Accept where we are, who we are. And then Jesus can truly help. Don't be like that man who went to the, sent to the temple to pray and all he said was, I'm glad I'm not like other men. Many of us have that type of Christianity. But I pray to God that we, as we hear sermons every single week, or whenever it's presented, we can truly say like that man, have mercy, Lord, upon me, a sinner. What is the purpose of self-examination? 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5, the Bible says, we do the self-examination to tell or to know whether we are in the faith. The question is asked, know he not your own selves? That's what self-examination is for. We need to know ourselves. We need to know if we're truly in the faith. Now the question is asked, who needs, who needs it? Who needs to do self-examination? Don't tell me, friends, that you have been in the church for 30 years. I've been here for 40 years. I've been an elder. I've held all the different offices in the church. You know, I built that church over there. Um, I sweat sleepless days and nights and so forth. I mean, I've done all these things. Don't tell me, friends, that you have been this, this, you know, you've been in the church so long that somehow it is okay. Well, I don't need to do a self-examination. You see, I'm a deacon, you see. I don't need to do a self-examination. I'm the pastor. I'm an elder. It is well with my soul. I mean, Peter was walking with Jesus himself, and he believed that he was okay. He believed he would never, ever, he said to Christ, I would even die before I betray thee. I won't deny you. But as they say, the proof is in. The put. Now, what are the examples of self-examination? And I'll be closing so. Let's examine our public life. Ask yourself these questions. Am I dishonest? Do you steal? Do you swear? Do you tell lies? Are you given to drunkenness, uncleanness, blasphemy, gossip? Do you violate the Sabbath? Do you work on God's holy day? Do you return a faithful tithe and offer? And these are rhetorical questions, not to be answered, but examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Know your own selves, the Bible says. You will be examined and judged by God. It will benefit every single one of us to do some self-examination ourselves. 